Good morning, everybody. I'm the computer science librarian here at Dow, and I'm here to talk to you about the Dow Library System. And I know that some people are grad students that have already done their undergraduate here, so this might be just a refresher. What I've tried to do is just pick five things that really will help you use your library more effectively to support your scholarly activity. So first of all, here at Dalhousie, we have five libraries, and going to the libraries is something that people do in terms of the physical buildings, but many, many more people go to the website. So how many people go to our website in the run of a year? On the Dal website, we are probably the busiest spot. Uh, last year, we had 3.4 million clicks coming into the library through the link on the Dal website. So it really is a busy spot. Last year, we also had a number of power outages. So when our website goes down, we hear about it. We do have IT people on call 24 hours, so just know if we have another winter like we had last year, and there are power outages, that we try to get this website up as fast as we can, and sometimes we have to restart the servers, but we absolutely know and we hear from people as fast as possible that they're still trying to do research, and please, please, please get things back online. So we know that this is how most people are coming into the libraries. <laughs> However, in our top five tips, first of all, I do want to just make sure that you know, we have five libraries. And we have four of them here in Halifax, the Dunn, the Sexton, the Kellogg, and the Killam, and we have one in Truro. Now, these libraries are not branch libraries. They really are assigned to a faculty, and each faculty has a home library. And what we have in the library is what's best needed to support the students that are in those programs. So going in and out of the different libraries, you will find and discover there are different services and there are things that you might really like to know about. So do go and visit your home library. The Killam is home to the largest faculties on campus, so science and arts and social sciences, but also management and computer science. And some of the things that are in the Killam library that are unique, we have an online group study room booking system that really help you organize group work, group project work, so you can find a location, book it with your net ID, and then tell everybody in your group member where it is so that people can schedule around it. Use that to your advantage, it really helps. We also try to make sure that when you're hungry in the evening, there's a place for you to eat. So we've tried to coordinate when the library's open, the subway's open. So once the classes get into full swing next week, you will be able to take advantage of that and the food can be brought into the library in all areas except where there's computers. So it, it, we're just trying to be as friendly and realistic as possible. We know that people like to study and eat at the same time, so that's just what we encourage. Uh, on the fourth floor, we have an area that's designated as the grad pad. It is key coded. You could only get into it with your DAL card if it says you're a grad student. And inside that area, there are group study rooms. There's a seminar room, so if you do want to practice a presentation, that's a place you can do it, and there's a small kitchenette. So you can have a cup of tea while you're in there as well. And it's only other grad students that are there. And sometimes people just need to get away from where they live and less distractions. And this is one place where you can go. Uh, tip number two, register your DAL card. Every year, the end of August, we delete the previous students and we have to re-register all the new students. And this can be done in the library, your home library, at the service point. And once you've registered your DAL card to be your library card, you can sign out books, you can get materials that are on reserve, course reserve, you can log into your Novanet account, which is your book account, you can renew books online. Now that you're a grad student, you can check out books for the term, so anything checked out today won't be due until January 30th. If you still need it, you can renew it online and it'll be due on May 30th. So you have a full term loan of the materials you check out. You can also request document delivery, so anything we don't have, if it's a book or an article, and you really feel that it would be essential for your learning, uh, please ask us to see if we can get it for you. Libraries have borrowing agreements with other libraries, so we get things and we pay for them. If you see a message on your screen that says, if you want a copy of this article, pay $30, immediately tell yourself, that's probably not something I need to do. I bet the library can get it for me. 
So just know that what we don't have, we usually have access to. All you have to do is ask, and the way to do that is with document delivery, and if you've never done it before, come into the library and ask, and we'll show you how to do it, and then from that point on, you can do it yourself. It's also the card that you use for printing and photocopies, and in the Killam, we have black and white printers, we have a color printer, and we have a 3D printer. So all of those things are available for you to use. Now, tip number three. Our website has tons of stuff on it. It's not something you're going to figure out immediately, so spend a little bit of time just getting to know some of the things that are there. But it is really what's there 24 hours. So when you need the libraries, this is what you're probably going to be using. So libraries.dal.ca, and there's a number of different tabs that are there to help you be productive. But when you're accessing things that require authentication, immediately if you're off campus, you just have to enter your net ID and password, and you will have access to all the things you have at home that you do if you're on campus. And we pay thousands of dollars, and it's part of your tuition, in order to get access to all these different journal articles online, so we really encourage you to use them. I would encourage you to test this out before you have a deadline, just to make sure everything's working. And if you have any difficulty, we have an IT help center also in the Killam. That's where people, if they're having difficulty with anything that has to do with technology, you can go and get some help. The library hours are listed on the website. There's a link that goes directly to library hours. They can be con convoluted because we have five different libraries and we're switching right now from the summer schedule into the fall schedule. They're listed alphabetically. So if you're looking for the Killam hours, it's not going to be the first library listed because the Kellogg comes before the Killam. So just pay attention to what you're looking at. But once we're in full swing next week, we'll be open every day from 8 in the morning until midnight. And people are in the building from start to finish. It's, it's a heavily used library. Uh, tip number four, we have subject guides. There are a tab at the top of the library website, and they will take you into an alphabetical list of everything we have guides on. So you might be taking courses that maybe are not in your major. What happens is most students get really familiar with a couple of databases that they use all the time, and that's kind of their go-to database. They know how to use it really well. But if you take an elective in an area that's really not well served by that database, sometimes students don't realize there's other resources that are much more specific to a particular area. So you can have all these subject guides listed by subject. It's another option, a sorting option, and it'll list the faculty. So if you click on a subject guide, what you're going to find out is what resources are best for this subject area. So instead of having to wade through thousands of journal titles and hundreds of databases, you're going to potentially see here are the five best resources for computer science courses. And then you're instantly more productive and you're really taking advantage of my knowledge, which I'm passing on to you through my guide, and you haven't even had to come and talk to me. It's just right there in my guide. You just have to read it, click on it, and go. And it really, really does help. And I will tell you that those Google links are proxied. So if you're using them off campus, it'll prompt you for the net ID, and you're going to get the articles from the databases that we pay for because it thinks you're on campus. So do use the Google and Google Scholar if that's what you're used to for finding articles. You will get access into the articles with one click like you do on campus. The other thing that's on those subject guides is who your subject specialist is. And it lists their name, their email, their hours, office hours if they have them, where they're located, their home library, so that you can contact somebody if you need to and make an appointment and get some one-on-one -on -one assistance. So tip number five is do ask a librarian. What is good about a librarian is we're not the person that marks you. So if you need help and you kind of think your prof thinks you know something that you don't, a safe person to ask is the librarian. And we really can be very helpful. A lot of students come to us and they say, I know I should know how to do this, or I didn't really do much research when I was an undergrad, now I have to do this, or I don't know what style this is, and the prof wants it to be done in Chicago, and I don't know how to do Chicago, I only did APA. Like, th those kind of questions can come to us, and you can get a quick answer and move on with your work, and nobody else in your class or your prof needs to know that you didn't know what they think you should already know, because they think you know everything. We have a chat service. It's available from 10 in the morning until 10 p.m. It's on our website, and you just type in your question, and you'll get someone responding to it uh, right there in real time. So again, it's a way to be anonymous if you don't want to identify yourself, but you still have a question. That's another way to do it. We have a walk-in service. So in the Killam, the Killam Library Service Point is in the lobby, the KLSP. We have somebody there, a professional librarian from 11 to 8 on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, from 11 to 5 on Thursday and Friday, and from 1 to 4 on Saturday and Sunday. So there's somebody available to help you with research assistance, your research assignments, every day. 
So if you need help, please know that we absolutely are interested in your success and using our resources to the best of your ability and our ability. So coming to the Killam should be something that everybody feels welcome. Last year, we had more than a million visitors come into the library. Now, they weren't all students, but most of them would be students. So consider yourself going to a busy spot. It's one of the busiest buildings on campus, and we know that despite the fact that some people say, you know, libraries are going away and books are going away, we're not seeing that. We do find that students are about 50-50 between preference for a print book and an e-book, so we really try to have as many of print books and e-books as we can. And we help people find them, and people are in and out of that library all the time. And usually when it gets to be close to exams, we extend our hours with what we call night owls from midnight until 3 in the morning. And that just gives students another place to come when they're getting ready to study for exams. So that's my five tips on libraries and using them effectively. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Yes? It's open when the library's open. Midnight. Now, they always make an announcement at 11.30 just telling you that the circulation desk is setting, shutting down and that they'd like people to start wrapping up. Then they make another announcement at 11.45. But it really is the security people are kind of there for the 12 o'clock. And everything in the building is open when the building's open. There's two reading rooms that are very, very quiet. And the fourth floor is the quiet floor, which is where the grad pad is. It's on the fourth floor. Hi, I just wanted to know whether I'll be able to access the research paper back home. Will I be able to access them? Absolutely. The research papers as well? Any place there's internet access, that's uh -huh. why there's the authentication. Okay. Anything you click on, so if okay. you're back home and wherever home yep. is, it doesn't matter, anywhere in the world that there's an internet connection, uh -huh. if you click on a DAL resource and you have a net ID, yep. you're going to be able to access okay. that resource. Which includes the IEEE papers as well? Yes. Okay, thanks. Absolutely. And if you are searching for IEEE pa papers, yep. they can be done with Google because they're fully indexed by Google, okay. but you do have to be proxied. So just make sure you're proxy, but then net ID, you'll be authenticated and you can download as many papers as you need for personal okay. research. Thank you. And our license does cover that. Almost every one of our databases will allow students to download a copy. So most grad students really have sometimes 50, 60, 70 PDF articles on a laptop. If you do that, just rename them. The default names are not very helpful. So as long as you put a different name there, it'll help you find them. That's just a little tip. OK, well, thank you very much. And good luck on your uh, graduate degrees. <laughs>